covid second wave and subsequent waves are devastating countries communities and families widespread fear worry and stress are normal responses to any perceived or real threats especially at times when we are faced with an uncertainty or the unknown and we don't know where all these end and when so it's normal and understandable that people are experiencing fear in the context of the covid-19 pandemic i see many covid patients as a clinician every day and i feel one of the neglected part of covid illness is peeping into their mind and seeing if they are okay mentally let's discuss This is Dr. Arun Naik. I am a neurosurgeon and a vlogger. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to Doc Logs. The fear of becoming virus positive in addition to lockdown, restriction of movements, work from home, temporary unemployment, home schooling of children and lack of physical contact with family members have taken a toll on our delicate mind and is creating havoc in the form of increased severity of symptoms and decreased immunity to fight this disease today we have with us my biker friend a well known psychiatrist dr roshan jain who has managed hundreds of covid patients in india and uk i raised all these concerns to dr roshan jain come let's see what he has to say Thank you for inviting me to talk about stress during COVID-19 crisis. I'm Dr. Roshan Jain, a senior psychiatrist at Apollo Hospitals, Bangalore. As a practicing psychiatrist for the last 22 years, I've never seen such a rapid increase in the number of individuals suffering from stress, anxiety, depression, and other mental health problems. We are indeed living in a very stressful times as we enter the 15th month of this unrelenting pandemic. Many are beginning to experience significant amounts of stress and burnout. We have endured much. from the fear of infection to health concerns about coronavirus and from the pressures of keeping up with an ever changing news to stress about restrictions and isolation and to cope with changes in our work pattern or loss of employment many are struggling to manage their children at home and education from home our worries were already high and the second wave arrived and only multiplied our fears i must emphasize that covid-19 is real and so is our stressful reaction to it stress is a normal reaction and some amount of stress improves attention and performance and during the outbreak stress is necessary to enhance vigilance and motivate us to take precautions to safeguard our family help prevent the spread of virus but unrelenting stress like we have seen during this pandemic is sure to take a toll on our health and well-being stress causes fear anxiety depression sleep disturbances anger increased use of substances and of course worsening of mental health conditions It also accounts for a wide array of physical health problems including impaired immunity. Stress is more pronounced in those who are infected or those whose family members are affected or when their loved ones are at high risk and is generally seen much more in parts of the world which are heavily impacted by the outbreak. A study by the American Psychological Association reported that nearly 8 in 10 adults say that the coronavirus pandemic is a significant source of stress in their lives. There are other research which suggests that 1 in 2 is significantly affected by anxiety which would amount to over 600 million people perhaps many more are living and breathing in fear but if you have felt more stressed and anxious in the last year then be assured that you are not alone we are all in it together remember the virus can affect our body but we cannot allow it to affect our mind and when there is chaos and uncertainty outside an inner turmoil soon follows we may not influence external reality other than following precautions such as masking hand sanitization and phys- physical distancing but we sure can calm ourselves and it's that inner calm that will help us cruise through these difficult times so what are the signs of stress stress can present with behavioral physical emotional and cognitive features you may notice some or all of them the behavioral features include an increase or decrease in energy or activity level irritability with outbursts of anger 
frequent arguing, having trouble relaxing or sleeping, frequent crying and worrying spells, wanting to be alone or blaming other people for everything, being pessimistic, having difficulties in communicating or listening, having difficulties in giving or accepting advice and help, and inability to feel pressure. For some, an increase in alcohol, tobacco use or illegal drugs might be a consequence of ways to cope with stress. Bodily features of stress include headaches or other bodily pain, losing appetite, comfort eating, stomach cramps or diarrhea, cold sweats and chills, getting shakes and tremors, or having a racing heartbeat. Cognitive features include having trouble remembering things or thinking clearly or concentrating or feeling even confused and difficulties in making decisions. So how to relieve stress? Well, back in the good old days, people used to de-stress by going out with friends and family, enjoying a movie, exercising at the gym, or taking a holiday. Many of these stress-busting activities has been taken away from us. During COVID restrictions, we have to find other ways to ease down our stress. Now, these are nothing new, but we just need to do what we already know in a more consistent manner. So here are some of the things that might just work for you. Firstly, get away from negativity. You will agree that social media posts, news stories and information overload has consumed us like never before. And when it consumes us, you know, it begins to control us. Remember, being exposed to non-stop data that is biased, harmful and often fake is unhealthy. So let's try to refocus, cut down on social media, stop participating in the spread of fear by sharing unverified news and keep away from harmful and pessimistic people. Let's set a limit on how much time we spend reading or watching news or social media posts about the outbreak. Staying up to date during a crisis is essential. But make sure to take time away from the news to focus on things in your life that are going well and the one that you can control. Next, access correct information and advice. Ensure that you get correct information about the pandemic from one or two credible sources or international bodies like World Health Organization. Don't trust WhatsApp graduates or pundits. The government of India in March 2020 announced that teleconsultation is a valid and effective way of delivering health care which means that you can now access all kind of experts online and get the correct and timely guidance. Next point, never ignore self-care as keeping yourself healthy is essential to remain healthy for others. So start by getting enough sleep and rest. Sleep is a great de-stressor and rejuvenator. So don't ignore it. Get at least eight hours of sleep at night. Wake early. Make sure you, your sleep is ritualistic, keeping all the gadgets away for two hours before the bedtime and two hours after you wake up. Get some physical exercise daily, about 30 to 45 minutes daily for five days per week if your age and health permits. Otherwise, mild exercise, stretching or sun salutation is better than none. If allowed out, walking is a great way to get some exercise and sunshine. Practice deep, slow breathing meditation for at least 15 minutes in the morning on waking and 15 minutes before bedtime. This will ensure that you start the day and end the day well. Meditate for five minutes whenever your thoughts drift and worry takes over. Meditation can clear the brain fog like nothing else. It can bring peace, bring your mind to the present, away from the past regrets and future concerns. Consume mindfully. We are overeating while stuck at home, so avoid junk food, have a healthy diet plan, hydrate well, avoid excessive amount of caffeine or alcohol, avoid tobacco and illegal drugs. Use practical ways to relax such as having a structured routine throughout the day, whether you're working from home or you're a homemaker or a student sitting in front of a computer for online classes. Pace yourself between stressful times and pursuing other activities or hobbies. Take regular breaks, connect and talk to your family and friends. Remember, a problem shared is a problem halved. Pay attention to your body and emotions. Look for and respond to early warning signs of stresses. Recognize how past experiences affect thinking and feeling about the current events and take lessons from managing it. Accept that feeling stressed and anxious and depressed is common in crisis. Finally, seek early professional help. If stress is overwhelming, beginning to cause significant anxiety and depression and hinders your work and relationship, wait no more. I recommend you seek professional help from those who understand emotions and mental health issues and can offer treatment options such as counseling, therapy or medication. Early intervention will reduce suffering and ensure early recovery. We may not have control over a crisis, but we surely can choose how to react to it. Finally, I want to share a quote by Charlie Chaplin, who stated that nothing is permanent in this wicked world, not even our troubles. 
I think like all crises, this will also pass. While that happens, let the introspection, learning and rejuvenation continue. Keep calm, keep safe. Well, nothing is permanent in this wicked world. I think this is a silver lining during this wicked pandemic. You have lucidly told us the reason behind the stress and anxiety during COVID and have given wonderful insights into controlling the stressed out life during this pandemic. We'll have many more mental health sessions with you, Dr. Jain. Thank you so much for coming here. Friends, we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching and hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give us a big thumbs up. Share this video with all your social media circles so that let it reach everyone. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to Doc Logs. By the way, Dr. Jain also has a YouTube channel called Mindism. The link is in the description below. Please subscribe to him. He has some wonderful videos on mental health. I'll be back with another equally interesting doc log very soon. Till then, feel awesome, live awesome and take good care of your health.